Hold on to your wallets, friends. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. You know what this video is. It's my review of the new Prada Beauty collection. I've been waiting so long for this to launch. This was sneak peek quite a couple of months back in the beauty community. And for this review today, I have not only the foundation, but I also have both of the lipstick formulas and I have two of the beautiful eyeshadow palettes to swatch, demo, and review for you all. So if you wanna hear all of my thoughts about this very expensive collection, then keep watching. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you are new here. Welcome, my name is Sophia and I'm a complete luxury addict. I upload new videos just like this every single week, mostly on luxury beauty, but a little bit on luxury fashion and lifestyle as well. So if that is your jam, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And as a quick reminder, guys, I will have a shopping guide down below on where you can get all the products that I talk about in this video along with anything else that is on my face today. Shopping through those links is a great way to support my channel. And without further ado, let's dive in. All right, party people, let's start off with the foundation. This is the Prada Reveal Skin Optimizing Foundation. This comes in 33 shades. It's supposed to be a soft matte, medium buildable coverage. It retails for $70, which is pretty expensive, but it is refillable. So once you purchase this, you can buy refills for $55, so I guess that makes it a little bit better. Can we first off just admire the absolutely stunning and sleek packaging? Prada Beauty is nailing it with the packaging in this collection. This is so beautiful, it's pretty weighty. I love that they've incorporated all of the little details from their brand in the packaging, along with the logo. We also have the little triangle symbol here. On the inside, you have the beautiful pistachio color that they're known for at the moment. It's just absolutely perfection. Even the boxes that these come with, they are just so beautiful and chic and they have that kind of like Saffiano leather textured to them. Oh, I just love the little details. It is so, so beautiful. So let's get this foundation on my face. Actually, let me just read you real quick the description that is on the box. It says, instantly unify skin with all day soft matte, seamless and flexible coverage. Optimizes light diffusion in real life and on screen with IRL micro filter technology, blurs the look of pores and fine lines. And it says here on the web, website, the key ingredients that they are highlighting are niacinamide, vitamin E, and something called lactobacillus extract complex, which is to refine skin texture. I mean, I don't know, guys. I'm not like a big fan of the whole skincare in makeup. It's just like more of a plus for me. I'm more interested in whether or not the foundation looks really good. Full disclosure, this is a first impressions review. I don't do a lot of these on my channel, but I know that you guys are really excited for this review. So I played around with this foundation a little bit last night and I definitely have some thoughts. This is what the texture looks like. It's not the runniest foundation, but it does have a very thin and lightweight texture. I would 100% agree with the description where it says that this is a soft, matte foundation. I'm gonna be applying it with this brush, by the way. I will link it down below. Let's get this on half of my face. This 100% is medium buildable coverage as well. See how little I put on in terms of the amount of product? Like I, I probably took like maybe half of that one pump and it's already enough to cover my entire face. I would say less is more with this foundation. It's extremely blurring. It's extremely perfecting. It's not gonna be super glowy and moisturizing. It doesn't really give you that dewy look at all. This looks very special event, very like perfecting, very like runway, if that makes sense. And I did have a pretty red breakout right there and it's almost completely gone like i'm not even gonna have to really put any concealer on that i am gonna do a wear test with this also of course look how perfecting it is look how perfecting i didn't even really use up all the product that was on my hand i could probably use one pump over the whole face i really want to show you how much coverage you can get so this is the side without and this is the side with the foundation. By the way, I will put the shade that I use in the description box down below. I'm gonna link all of these products down below so that you guys can you know where to shop. I'm gonna have a full shopping guide. If something is going to be pretty full coverage or maybe like medium to full coverage, I definitely like the texture to be very thin and weightless because I don't want a lot of foundation building up on my face. 
I have dry skin for anybody that is new here and I really do not need that looking, you know, crusty by the end of the day. I am also filming in natural light. All right, so here it is. I think that less is more with this foundation. Like start off with one pump all over the face and then maybe go in with a little bit here and there. It's not dewy, it's not glossy. See how it has that kind of soft matte finish? If you're not really a fan of matte foundations, I am not so sure that this is going to be for you because it does have that very blurring, airbrushed, perfecting type of finish. So let me get nice and close for you guys so you can see the finish. Very perfecting. If you have very, very dry skin, I think you really need to prep your skin for this foundation because you really don't get any glow. It's more of that like micro pigment blurring type of glow as opposed to a sheen on the skin. The other thing that I really want to highlight because this is going to be a deal breaker for some is that this definitely has fragrance. It's not as bad for me as the Chanel or the Dior foundations in my opinion. Those are very very perfumed. This however it does have a very powdery smell. It smells like iris I think. I think a lot of the Prada perfumes have like an iris and like powdery undertone to them. So pretty much all of the makeup has that same scent throughout. So if you don't like any fragrance in your foundation, you're gonna wanna skip this one because it is pretty heavily fragranced. I can not say that it's like the best fragrance in the world as well, but like that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me if it's makeup. It bothers me more if it's skincare. I'm also going to show you guys just a close-up photo of the ingredients here because some folks were saying that they had trouble finding the ingredients. So you guys can take a little screenshot of that. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and then in my final thoughts I will give you guys my conclusion or at least my first impressions of this Prada foundation. Next up friends we have the lipsticks. There are two different formulations in this range. We have the hyper matte and we also have the soft matte. I'm going to be breaking down the differences of each of these but before we try these on can we just admire the beautiful packaging once again Prada Beauty absolutely nailed it with this one it's luxurious it's weighty it kind of reminds me of the Byredo lipsticks which I absolutely love the way that you can tell the difference between the two formulations is that the hyper matte has this little gold ring around it and then the soft matte has just like the all over silver now the hyper matte this is supposed to be like one stroke full saturated matte lipstick and you definitely get that from this. This is a very special formulation. I'll talk about it in just a second when we do the try on but I do want to show you guys supposedly this formulation is inspired by the Prada Safiano leather. So on the packaging or I guess on the bullet itself I'll show you guys a close-up. It does look like the little Safiano leather like cross hatching you know the little pattern that they have on that textured coated leather which i thought was just like a really nice luxurious branded touch and then the soft matte is supposed to have adjustable coverage this is supposed to be a little bit more like buildable a little bit more i guess every day you could say it's going to be a lighter less saturated formula and this formula is inspired by the prada nylon so if you look very closely the pattern on here is supposed to look like the prada nylon once again, I know it's like a little bit of a stretch in terms of the inspiration, but I'm here for the aesthetics. I really, really like it. Let me show you guys the Hyper Matte. This shade is called Lava. I went for the boldest, brightest lipstick I could possibly find. So let me show you how this applies. It's insanely pigmented. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very careful because doing this on camera, it doesn't always turn out good. Even the point of the bullet is like that little triangle, the little Prada triangle. So it's kind of like a convenient shape for applying the lipstick. So here we have the shade Lava. It is a beautiful, bright, slightly orangey red. It's insanely stunning. I love this color. The texture of these lipsticks when you first put them on, they are very creamy, but as you saw, highly saturated. I think the closest thing I could compare these to are those Lisa Eldridge insanely saturated lipsticks, but 
These are a little bit different. I don't have any lipstick like this in my collection. It is very, very unique because not only does it go on very, very saturated, but after like a minute or two, it will dry down and it almost acts like a liquid lipstick, but like the most high-tech liquid lipstick you've ever worn. They are not drying. They kind of dry down to like this soft matte slightly plush texture with very, very little transfer. Like these are incredibly long wearing. If you're looking for a really good bright lipstick that's not going to budge, I really think that you guys should check these out. Right now, let's try it out. We are seeing some transfer, but after a couple of minutes, you do not get any transfer from these lipsticks. It doesn't really highlight fine lines in my opinion. I think anytime you have a matte lipstick, it's not really gonna blur the fine lines that are on your lips. At the end of the day, it is a matte lipstick. I think that these are incredibly unique. Let's let this dry down just a little bit. All right, friends, it's been about 30 minutes that this lipstick has been setting down. I just wanna let you see what it looks like. It pretty much looks the same. It has a very like comfortable, soft matte feel. I don't feel like it's like drying and cloying on my lips at all, but it is a matte lipstick. It's gonna look very, very saturated and matte on the lips. And now that it has set down, you'll see it's very, like, very minimal transfer. Absolutely love this shade. Now let's try the second lipstick. Next up, let's go in with the other lipstick formula. This is the Monochrome Soft Matte Lipstick. And unlike the Hyper Matte, which was super saturated, very matte, sets down, long lasting, this is kind of the opposite. It's going to be more lightweight, more airy, more sort of cloud-like on the lips. If you take a look at the images on the Prada website, a lot of the models have that sort of blurred lip look. So you can sheer this out and have it be just kind of very airy, creamy, lightweight on the lips. Or you can put on another layer and you get a little bit more color saturation. But this is not going to set down. It's more of a creamy matte as opposed to that like saturated long lasting matte that we got from the other formula. The color that I picked out is just a very basic nude. I got a bright red and a nude because I don't know, I didn't know what colors to pick guys. There are more exciting colors than this, but I'll show you guys swatches here of what it looks like. So let's pop this on so you can see what it looks like. And my lips naturally are more on the pigmented side. So this might show up a little bit darker than it does on some of you. But that being said, it adds a really nice nude look to the lips. It's incredibly creamy. It's so creamy and it stays that way. You don't have to be too precious with it. I feel like this particular formula, it's made to not even really need like much of a mirror when you're applying it. It doesn't have to be super precise. I don't think it's the kind of thing that's designed to be used with a lip liner. For example, it's just a little bit more easy and effortless. It also says on the Prada website that you can use this as cream blush. I think you can do that with most lipsticks. I wouldn't do it with the Hyper Matte because that is just so matte. It might be a little bit hard to blend. But I want to show you guys, you know, you can easily just kind of dot this onto the cheeks and then blend it in. And because it's so airy and moussey, it just goes on perfectly and effortlessly. This isn't gonna last as long as the Hyper Matte, that's for sure. As soon as you eat, you know, it kind of wears off. But if you're somebody that really likes that kind of plush, creamy, airy feeling on the lips, or if you are a little bit more concerned about the fine lines on your lips, then I would probably go with this formula. I'm going to keep this on my lips because I think this is gonna go really great with the eyeshadows. And that is exactly what we are going to apply next. By the way, I forgot to mention friends in the introduction to these lipsticks. These are also refillable. All of the makeup in this collection is refillable. So the full lipstick with a component is retailing for $50 on the Prada US website. And then if you buy just the refill of the lipstick, it's going to be $40. So you save a little bit. It's still a lot. I know it's a luxury price point, but it's nice that you can get the refills. If you really like these, you use them up and you can replace it. Next up, we have the Prada Dimensions Durable Multi-Effect Eyeshadow Palettes. So these are the little quads that they have launched and these retail for $80, but just like all the other products, they are refillable. So if you happen to use up that much eyeshadow that you want to buy a refill, you can buy the refill 
for $65. Let me show you guys the two colorways that I picked up. The first one that we have here is called Profusion. For sure, this one is a little bit more dramatic. I had to pick it up. We have a mixture of a gray. We have a deep black. We also have a bright shimmering silver. And then we have a little pop of kind of like an acid yellow chartreuse, I guess you would call it. It says here on the Prada website that pretty much all of these are inspired by iconic prints of the fashion house. I love the fact that they're weaving in a lot of their house codes. We have once again, the little triangle motif. And in fact, I actually did have a Prada blazer that was these exact colors and also with the little triangle print. So I needed to get this one. I needed to get this one, friends. The other print that I picked up is this one right here. It is called Pure. So this one is a mixture of kind of like some warm tone neutrals. We have a deeper reddish brown. We have a mid-tone brown, a bright shimmering gold, and then we have this pop of sky blue. So once again, pretty much all neutrals with a pop of color. There's another one that has a pop of green. There's another one that has a pop of purple. There's one with a pink. There's one with a red. I decided to go with these because I felt like you know, we get one that's kind of dramatic and smoky, and then this one looks like it's a little bit more, you know, wearable for daytime. Real quick as well, I will show you the beautiful packaging. I have fingerprints all over mine already, but it is stunning. Just like the rest of the collection, it's absolutely stunning. I was hoping it would be a little bit more weighty, but I understand why it might not be. It's kind of hard to like carry around something that would essentially be a paperweight if it was any weightier than this but it has a nice like metally feel to it I don't know overall I'm very impressed with the packaging and then lastly friends before we get into the looks with these palettes I just want to briefly explain the formula you might be able to tell from the swatches these are very pigmented high impact shadows they actually have a very high oil content the oil that they use here is called Plucanesia volubilis oil. I don't know what that is, but I can definitely feel that these are super creamy and just like very, very pigmented to the touch. They have a really soft texture though, which I really enjoy that you guys are going to see in the demo. So I just want to kind of set the stage there. These are not like Dior soft satin shadows or anything like that. I'll do my best in my final thoughts to kind of compare these against some other brands. And then finally, the way that the layout of all the shadows works is that in the center, you get what is typically like a really good base shade. It's not a super high foil shine, but it's gonna be kind of like a slight satin shimmer, if that makes sense. Then you get this shade right here, which is going to be a deep intense matte that is supposed to be used for building up depth along the lash line or maybe in the crease. Then you get these super high shine foil shades to add shimmer, illumination, maybe in the inner corner of the center of the lid. And then once again, every palette has this matte pop of color for just, you know, having a little bit of fun. It's very Prada. It's very edgy. And with that, friends, let's get into the first look. I'm actually going to start off with the pure palette and do a little bit more of like an airier day look. Then I will take that off and I will put on Profusion and we'll do more like a smoky glam look. Let's dive in. I think I'm gonna start off with the center shade as it was suggested, but I'm only going to put it down kind of like in the center and inner corner because I think I'm gonna do the blue on the outer corner. And my tip to you guys is if you're gonna be doing a pop of color, try and not layer that color over these other browns. Because I think that if you do that, you might end up with the look being just like a little bit muddy because it, it, when you layer that type of color on top of a neutral you don't really get like the full effect and you guys can see it has a really nice like soft touch to it it has some creaminess to it it's easy to blend and it doesn't highlight any texture that is on the lid next up i'm going to go into the blue shade and i'm going to try applying this to the outer because I think that this will be a nice fun pop of color. It's like a, just a nice airy blue. I want the blue to be more pigmented, so I'm going in with the little sponge applicator that comes with the palette. And now I'm kind of adding a second layer there to really build it up. So really depending on what type of brush you use, you're either gonna get more of like that airy wash of color or you're gonna get a more layered, saturated application. I'm also gonna apply that blue, I think here to just like the outer 
lower lash line. Now I'm gonna go into that high shine foiled gold and we're gonna use this to kind of tie everything together. Check that out. Like these shadows are very pigmented. It really just depends on the brush. See how now that I blend it out, it kind of seamlessly melts into the eye. Let's apply some of that now to the inner corner as well. Yes, that is so gorgeous. Wait till you guys see the silver in the other palette. Here on the lower lash line. I just love how like satisfyingly creamy and pigmented these are, but there's no chunkiness. It's a, it's a creamy metallic. It's not like a glitter topper. Now I'm gonna take this small little detail brush. I'm gonna dip into the deeper brown here and I'm going to use this to just kind of gently define the outer edges so that there's a little bit more depth. There's a little bit more of like a perimeter, so to speak, to this look, but I don't wanna make it too deep. I wanna kinda keep it so off. I like the contrast of the deeper brown. All right, friends, this is the final look with the Pure palette. I love how pretty and soft this is. I like the little pop of blue. Sometimes blue can be a little bit scary to work with, but if it's more of like a light pastel, I'm a fan because I can kind of make it work for a day. I would just follow my recommendation, if I were you, of kind of color blocking the colors if you're going to be going in with that blue or else it's going to look very, very muddy. I can definitely see myself just using in many cases, like just the blue and the gold or just the blue and this color. You really don't have to use all of them, but this is the really pretty diffused look that we're going for today. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of the look that I created with the Pure palette. On to the next look. Are we ready to dig into the Profusion palette? I'm gonna start off with this center shade. I was playing around with this palette last night and this shade is very beautiful. It's like a soft pewter. And I actually think that this shade would be so nice for like a one and done because it's dark enough that it adds a little bit of depth, but light enough that it doesn't kind of make the eyes look too overdone. I'll take a step back here so that you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's like just a little bit of color. If you really like cool tones, I think you're going to enjoy this. And see that really pretty, the sun is coming out right now. <laughs> See that beautiful, like creamy sheen it has? This is a little bit of a shimmer. I would say this palette is a little bit more shimmery than the other palette that I just demoed. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are tapping off your brush because while it is creamy, there is some shimmer that gets onto the brush and you just don't want that getting onto your cheeks. I love this color. I think it's so beautiful and sophisticated. I'm not usually a gray person, but I really, really like it. I'm gonna go in with a little detail brush in that same shade. I'm just gonna blend that along the lower lash line. Next, I'm gonna go into that acid green color and we're gonna be using this as a pop of color on the inner corner. So for the last look, we did a pop of color on the outer part of the eye. And then for this look, we're doing it on the inner part of the eye. If you ever get stumped with these palettes, you know, if you're planning on using the pop of color, just decide from the beginning. Like, are you gonna do inner corner? Are you gonna do outer corner? Are you gonna do just the lower lash line? You could use it as a liner on the upper lash line. You could use it as a pop of color right in the center of the lid. So just kind of figure out where you're gonna do that before you start. So then you can kind of leave that space open and plan the look around the color. Or you don't have to use the color at all. You can just use the neutrals. <laughs> now I'm gonna go into the black. This is a very pigmented black. Like it's so pungent, okay? So you can use it as a liner. You can also wet your brush and kind of turn it a little bit into like a liquid if you wanted more staying power or if you just, I don't know, you want a little bit more control. I'm going to add a little bit of depth to the lash line and kind of like wing it out to the outer corner of the eye. And I'm gonna take this little blending brush and I'm gonna blend it out. And I'm gonna take the excess and use it to sculpt the top of my eyelid there to get some more shape. Before I blend the other side out, I just wanna show you how you could take it from more of a smoky look on that side to more of like a winged cat eye look on that end. I'm gonna do more of like a winged 
smoky looks. I'm gonna sort of combine the two, but I just wanted to show you just kind of the general shape that you can, you can create. I've been taking a little bit of powder here and I'm just kind of carefully cleaning up around the edges because it is black. You know, it's it's a little bit hard to control. I like to kind of get it on in the general shape that I want, and then I will use another little blending shade to clean everything up. I will link this one down below. Are you ready for the best part? We're gonna go into this shade, the silver shade. Oh my gosh, this one is even better than the gold, but you have to be careful because this silver, it is a little bit more glittery than the gold shade. I found that when I was playing around with this one last night, I was like, okay, this could lead to a little bit of fallout. It's just the texture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so shimmery. I love it. Oh, it's like foiled and delicious. Oh my gosh. I'm like just gently dipping my brush into the pan. It's like picks up so much. I think I want to do a little bit of silver right here. I'm taking this very straight little brush and I'm just going back into the black and uh, further defining the line there. All right, friends, I have popped on some mascara and here is the final look with the Pro Fusion palette. I really like how this came out. I loved how all of the shadows performed. I didn't have an issue with any of the shades. I think that the metallic is very high shine. I like the little pop of acid green. I don't think it's too, too much. I just like this is so cool. It's glam, but it's not too, too heavy. You could definitely deepen this up by building up the black shadow a little bit more or maybe adding an eyeliner and kind of smoking it out, putting some lashes on you can definitely make this, you know, more wearable or more glam depending on your preferences. So comment down below. Let me know how you think I did with the Profusion palette. Let me know if you think this is a look you would wear. Okay, friends, are you still with me? Now it is time for my final thoughts. I'm going to go through each of the products, let you know what I think. Are they worth it? How do they compare against other products that you might have in your collection? And of course, as always, I will be completely honest with you guys. First off, just kind of looking at the collection as a whole, I think it's beautifully designed. I think they did a very good job. I think that the quality in general is there, both in terms of the formulations and also in terms of the packaging. I do not think that this is a cash grabby release. I think this collection was very thoughtfully designed. Prada is one of the top three luxury brands in the world right now, so it makes a lot of sense that they would want to be launching this alongside Gucci and YSL and a lot of other luxury brands out there. They already have some very popular fragrances that they've been promoting. So it, it makes sense. It makes sense that they're coming out with color beauty products right now. Let's go through each of the products though, starting off with the foundation. I think that this is a very beautiful foundation. I don't think it's going to be necessarily for everybody, but I think if you really like a nice soft matte texture, it's absolutely beautiful. I will show you guys a daylight clip here that I filmed right before this so you can see what the makeup looks like up close in natural light after having worn it for about eight to nine hours. So kind of like a full end-to-end -end work day. You guys will see, it looks absolutely beautiful on my skin. It's very, very radiant. It hasn't worn off at all. I would say the one thing you need to watch out for is it is threatening to be a little bit dry on my dry patches around my mouth, which is very typical when I use matte foundations, but it's hanging in there. Like it hasn't quite gotten to the point where I'm like, ooh, I should have prepped my skin a little bit more. I think this is gonna work for a lot of different skin types. This is a first impression. This is only the second time that I'm wearing this foundation. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you wanna hear updates. But my first impressions are that this is very beautiful. I do think that less is more. I would not really layer this up because you get a lot of coverage with just one pump, one and a half pumps. It kind of runs the risk of getting a little bit cakey if you were to put too much. I would say in terms of the finish, this reminds me a lot of the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. It reminds me of one of my favorite foundations, which is the Pat McGrath foundation, except I think that that one is a little bit more, like you can kind of apply it in layers. You can shear it out a little bit more. And so for this, that's why I'm saying like, be a little bit careful 
because it actually is more like medium to full coverage in my opinion. So yeah, first impressions are that I think that this is very nice and I'm extremely pleased at how it looks like by the end of the day. Next up, we have the lipsticks. These are very expensive. They're $50 lipsticks, but that is pretty much in line with what we see from Gucci and Tom Ford. That's just the price of luxury lipsticks these days, but at least Parada delivered. They delivered on the gorgeous, modern, sleek, luxe packaging, and especially on the formulas. I love both of the formulas in this line. I think if you are trying to figure out what to get from this line because you want to try something out, you're a beauty lover, maybe you love Prada, my top recommendation would be to pick up one of the lipsticks because these aren't too crazy. You can find a color that works for you. You could pick up a nude or a beautiful red. There's lots of colors to choose from. And then we have two really beautiful formulas. So if you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't really need a new foundation. I don't like matte foundations. Or if the eyeshadow palettes seem a little little bit too out there for you. I think the lipsticks are going to be probably the most accessible item to pick up. Which formula do I like better? I don't know. I think that I like the hyper matte formula the best because to me, this is the most unique. Like this is crazy good technology. This might be one of the best lipsticks that I've ever tried, at least in kind of like that matte long lasting category because it's so beautiful and rich and saturated but it doesn't dry out my lips and it's kind of crazy how it sets down and lasts it kind of has this like soft rubbery type of feel if you've ever tried the new lisa eldridge liquid lipsticks the velveteen ones it kind of feels like that but it's a bullet lipstick so i don't know i think that that formula is just a little bit unique but hey if you don't like long wear formulas or you don't like something that is super matte i think going with the soft matte is great it gives this really nice kind of blurred velvety look to the lips i definitely want more lipsticks my wallet is crying right now but i really want more of the lipsticks i think that they are mm, chef's kiss so so beautiful and lastly we have the eyeshadow palettes these are a very interesting release to me because when i first saw these i thought to myself like who exactly are these for? Because most other luxury brands, the eyeshadows that they release tend to be a lot softer. A lot of luxury customers like softer formulas, more neutral tones. That is very popular right now. And I think it's really interesting that Prada came out with something that is a little bit more true to their brand, kind of like a little bit edgy. I feel like a lot of times Prada takes something that is traditionally a little bit frumpy or ugly or kind of strange and makes it really chic. And that's sort of what I think they are doing with these eyeshadow palettes. I don't think they're gonna be for everybody. If you like those really soft shadows, you're not gonna like these because these are very, very pigmented. This is gonna be more so for somebody who's like a Byredo customer, for example, or even if you're like a Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona customer, I think you're really gonna like these because they're just a little bit more artistic than your average luxury eyeshadow quad. At the end of the day, they're just neutral palettes with a pop of color, but because they're so expensive, friends, I think you need to ask yourself, realistically, like how often are you gonna use that pop of color? I tried to give you some ideas today about how you can incorporate the little color shade in different looks. It's really not that difficult, but if that's not your aesthetic, don't spend the money on these because there are so many other palettes out there that are fantastic that you're gonna get a little bit more use out of. But in general, I think the shadows are absolutely stunning. The metallics are so high shine and like satisfying on the lid and the mattes are very easy to work with. What are these similar to? You know, I was thinking that these are a little bit similar to the Byredo shadows. I'll show you guys right here. I have the Byredo Remembrance palette. I would say that the mattes in the Prada formula, they are more pigmented. I'll show you guys a side-by-side -side here. I have the Prada shadow on the top and then I have the Byredo shadow on the bottom. The Prada ones have, they're more of like a creamy texture. They're a little bit more intense. So that's the difference between those. But if I compare the foil shadows, they're pretty much the same as what you get from the Byredo. So as long as you don't mind a little bit more of like a, a more pigmented matte, I think you're really going to enjoy them. I also was thinking about the new YSL Mini Couture 
clutch palettes. I've been reviewing a lot of color stories of these palettes for you guys. I think that if you enjoy the slight creaminess of these shadows, you might really enjoy the ones from Prada. I think that the ones from Prada, once again, they are a little bit more pigmented. I'll show you guys similarly a side by side here. It kind of depends on the color, but for example, the black in the Prada Profusion palette is a lot more intense than the black that is in this palette right here. I'll link these down below, by the way, because you can get these now in a lot of different countries. Also in these palettes, the shimmer shades, they're more like glittery style shimmer shades. They have a lot of like sparkle and dimension, whereas the shimmers that are in the Prada palettes, they are more like that high foil shine that you get from the shimmer shades in the Byredo palettes or even maybe like a Pat McGrath palette as she has those metallics. Not the Blitz Astral shades, but like those high shine metallics. It's kind of like that. So there you have it, friends. That is my review of Prada Beauty. At the end of the day, I think that this is an absolutely beautiful collection. It really just depends on your makeup aesthetics and what types of formulations you prefer. But I think that the quality of the packaging and all of the products is absolutely amazing. I'm really excited to see what the brand comes out with next. I think out of all the things, like I said, I really like the Hyper Matte lipsticks. This is what I'm most excited about if I had to pick just one thing from the entire collection. But enough about what I think. I wanna hear about what you think. Sound off in the comments down below and let me know if you are eyeing anything from this collection. Did you find this review helpful? Did you pick anything up? Because I wanna know how you're getting along with these products. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.